Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, before we get going, we want to thank our newest patrons. We want to say a huge, huge thank you to Tyler. Hi, Tyler and Carl. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys, for your support. Again, you can join the Patreon family for basically less than three cents a day uh, or a dollar a month and have exclusive videos and watch everything from one spot. So on Christmas Eve, Bethlehem resembles a ghost town. Celebrations halted due to the ongoing war. And, you know, again, none of this really has to be be and i think more and more people are waking up to that fact right now we could all be celebrating in peace there's just one little problem and and that is that the control system on the planet doesn't want peace as you see uh 166 palestinians killed in the last 24 hours i saw another figure saying 149 uh, idf soldiers killed in the last uh, 24 hours it just doesn't stop and you know it's so antithetical to everything that we would think about with this time of year you have over 100 journalists killed since the attacks began and it's just such so much death, uh, violence, and atrocity because of division, because of, of different ideologies. Well, the ideologies are utilized as tools. Now, whether we're talking uh, political or religious, it's just used as a tool to keep us constantly fighting and divided so that small group that controls this situation uh, they're able to do it from the shadows and just get us to constantly destroy ourselves. As we see a Saudi French plan proposes exile for Hamas leadership uh, to Algeria. This is what they are proposing as basically what was 2 million people living in the Gaza Strip uh, is being just leveled to rubble and nothing. And, you know, how many people are really killed? We, we don't even have the slightest clue, really. You know, they'll give you a figure of somewhere over 20,000, but it, it feels like it's got to be much, much higher than that when you see just nothing but rubble. And this has been ongoing for a long time as you see people marching in uh, New York City, and you see uh, a depiction here with blood all over them of the, whatever you want to call them, uh, leading the foray into uh, Gaza. It's just, again, one more atrocity, and this one's meant to make it so that it's unforgettable, unforgivable, could, because there's a higher purpose here. This is this is all about taking down uh, the old system, but they want to replace it with something that's going to be even more restrictive. And in order to do that, they have to get people so angered all across the world that they kind of lose their mind in a frenzy like a uh, sharks in water filled with blood. Oh, it's a, it's a really difficult time for so many too. You know, we have all all of the stress that the holidays bring. Um, everything that they're doing to us, the toxicity rate is just off the charts. You know, heavy metals get into the brain, and and honestly, that makes people angry. It it just it it bleeds anger out of the body because the neurons they're not they're not functioning. They're not doing what they need to do and helping people process and when people can't process they just lash out when something bothers them and obviously this is something to be bothered about so you can see how much this is planned for humans it's just really sad that you know so so many humans are against each other when that's planned out to such a high degree you know as long as as long as we're at each other's throats they don't have to worry about us going after them and not enough of us are understanding that just yet. No, and and meanwhile, there has been an incredible uh, atrocity um, committed by the top power structure on the planet against humanity and, and an ongoing assortment of various atrocities uh, against the entirety of the planet. 
And, you know, again, as long as we don't take a step back and say, you know, this was completely manipulated uh, and recognize it, nothing will change. And yet, you know, change is exactly what we need. And the opportunity is there because, again, there is this awakening that's happening, albeit in stages and not equally amongst all peoples. At the same time, we have Turkey striking northern Iraq and Syria after 12 uh, soldiers there were killed. And so they conducted airstrikes on quote-unquote terrorist targets. Now, terrorist targets, you know, it, it all depends on the perspective of the person that's using these labels mm -hmm. because, you know, often terrorist targets are uh, can be viewed from the other side as freedom fighters. Yeah, but as long as we don't recognize this and and go along blindly, and this is the problem, because most of the world has been uh, deaf, dumb, ignorant, and, and blind as can be, and trusting the leadership to direct them. And, and that's going to get n us nowhere but off the edge of a cliff. So as long as we keep falling for the same old tactics, it's, it's never going to change. And these are times of momentous change. So we, we need to take a, advantage of that. The Turkish Defense Ministry said in a statement, 29 targets, including oil facilities and warehouses, were destroyed in the strikes. Six Turkish soldiers were killed and one was wounded in an attack in northern Iraq, uh, said a statement earlier in the day. Soldiers clashed with terrorists who tried to infiltrate an outpost. 13 terrorists have been neutralized, according to the ministry. So... Yeah, the words they use in in, in order to justify murder, because it's all murder, um, it, it, it's interesting to see it, you know, neutralized. Uh, yeah, but, you know, again, we're, we're killed, we're murdered. War is murder, and yet it's legalized murder. Humanity needs to understand this because we are so close to jumping off the ed edge of a really giant abyss right now. You have the Pentagon accusing Iran of striking oil tanker near India. And it, the, what hit me was it was a Liberia flag. Liberia is a small African nation, Japanese owned and Netherlands operated chemical tanker. OK, wait a minute. So it's it's flagged in Liberia, but it's owned by by some Japanese organization. But the Netherlands is operating it. It's a chemical tanker. This is, again, uh, how the system works. And it makes it so, who, who really is putting this there in the first place? You know, who really put this there? When it's flagged out of a country, and I know this is a common practice to have uh, ships, you know, flagged in certain countries for certain tax advantages, things like that. And that's the whole point. If you really want to have change, eliminate the whole concept of corporations because they hide behind corporations. One corporation gets sued, like let's look at Monsanto or whether it's PFIs or whatever, and, and they're hit with a huge financial blow, no big deal. The people that are manipulating behind the scenes are protected. They'll just create another one eliminate corporations eliminate corporations this is how they get away with murder they literally get away with murder because of this system uh, eliminating corporations would be one step again uh, towards bringing some semblance uh, of potential true liability for for doing certain nefarious actions to the world and this video is boy this is going to get just slammed meanwhile these are all military ships in in and around the red sea as you see the gulf of oman persian gulf um yeah yeah these are all military ships of different nations this is just a recipe for disaster here because you know you got chinese ships american ships you got japanese ships you got all sorts of ships in this area now as you see, the USS Kearney, as of yesterday, heading into the Gulf of Arden after refueling in Dorla, multi-purpose port in Djibouti, uh, and Japanese warship over there as well. Uh, you know, it, it, anything could happen at any time, um, and and at some point when they're when they really want to trigger something, 
They'll trigger it, absolutely. And meanwhile, Israel's Elliott port sees 85% drop in activity as Mediterranean imports also take a hit because everything is slowing to a halt. Uh, from those areas we were just looking at all the way through the Mediterranean as well. And this is just simply what happens in times of war. The shipping it becomes a target. Uh, countless ships were sunk um, during World War II it, that were potentially being used uh, to refuel and resupply troops. And even if they weren't, they're still a target because, you know, in, in war again, which is sanctioned murder, anything goes. And this is exactly how the system operates. And meanwhile, we see the Pentagon's Operation Prosperity Guardian to protect the shipping falls apart as Spain, Italy, and France reject requests. But 20 nations had agreed to uh, go ahead and take in part in this, and it, what they're giving us the feeling of is that it's collapsing and that the control is shifting over to the BRICS nations, which is no surprise because they've already won the war. Because it's all part of a script. And and we already know that they won the war because they've already made plans past that. When you look at you know the U.S. military making a statement like, "Well, it's a good thing World War III hasn't broken out yet because we only have ammo to last a week," and you know you have Biden going and making sure that there's uh, no refilling of the strategic oil reserve, which again, you know, militaries still run on oil and you don't have enough oil there, uh, well, again, it, we've been set up for a collapse. Meanwhile, thousands and thousands pour over the borders, and, and they're just coming in uh, ever-increasing numbers. We thought we saw the most of it. No, we haven't seen the most of the illegal migrants. They're still coming in. They're pouring in. And, you know, just to share, you know, what we've gotten from uh, the guides is, is, you know, kind of sombering. It's like, you know, set up cameras. <laughs> I don't want to set up cameras way out in, in, in the, you know, middle of the country and everything. But, yeah, you know, um, you got to be aware things are going to get, um, they are going to get rougher because we haven't woke up the planet yet. So we need to be aware of that. Things are going to get challenging. And again, when you're in the big cities, that, that's the scariest place right now. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be there. That That's even more unpredictability coming your way. That's where, I mean, the bigger things uh, are probably going to unfold. But being out in the middle of nowhere has its own challenges. I mean, if somebody is going to come to your house, they're not coming to your house because they're friendly. <laughs> They're coming to your house for, for, for a very interesting reason because you don't just go out in the middle of nowhere and, and, and knock on somebody's door. So, I mean, we all have a, a degree of preparation to do and we also need to help watch each other's back and do what we can with our neighbors if that's possible um, to, to help each other and, and hopefully we can accomplish that. But I look at these things as... The harder it is, the more growth that's going to come out of it, really. I mean, the harder you wind that, the tighter you wind the coil, the more spring you're going to get out of it. And that spring brings a lot of growth. So that's what we have to, to look forward to. And I think if we just keep our eyes on that, it, it you know, then the tough times go by, but we have our eye on the prize. That makes things easier to tolerate. Yeah. And just to take a step back, um, just to give you like a little analogy, Let's just say uh, there was this person and his name was Muhammad and he was living in Iraq. And so he lost family uh, during the first Iraq war, maybe cousins, aunts, uncles. And then later on, he lost family uh, and maybe lost a spouse in, in the second uh, war over there. And so, you know, again, recognize that maybe he's come over here now maybe he's one of those migrants and maybe it wasn't Iraq maybe it was uh, maybe he's in Syria and Syria has been bombed non-stop maybe he was from Afghanistan maybe he was from uh, one of those small African nations that most people don't even understand the U.S. troops are in uh, again if you're looking at a person that's lost members of their family maybe lost their parents lost their kids lost their spouse 
uh, they're devastated. Maybe they lost everything. Everything they ever owned was blown up to bits by, by American or NATO forces. Now, you know, they're, they're coming over. They came over the border. They're in the country. And then when they're set to go, don't you think he's going to be justified in his actions? Because, and I'm not saying that he is. I'm just saying his mindset from what he's gone through. And meanwhile, us over here, you know, we're just simply uh, thinking, you know, why are they coming over here? What are they going to do? And then when they're let loose, and, and some will and some won't uh, act according to what the controllers want, there will be those that their heart won't let them uh, go ahead and, and carry out uh, acts of violence on others or military acts. There's, there's always, and in some uh, cases, I, I remember reading uh, when people were drafted, I think it was the Vietnam War, uh, there was such a high number of people that could not shoot. They could not shoot because it, it's just not in them to, to take another life. Whether it's legalized by diabolical government agencies or not, it's just not in them. So there's many people that would shoot knowing they're shooting over the head or they're shooting off to the side because they don't want to take another life. And I think the same thing is going to happen to an even higher degree in this situation because we're awakening like we've, we haven't been awakening before. And at the same time, and we're, we are awakening because of natural factors. And one of them is the sunlight that they're blocking out. Why do you think they're blocking out the sun? Number one, it's because it's causing changes in our consciousness. That's number one. Everything else is secondary to that, you know, because they can't have humanity awakening that this has all been one big system to put down humanity and keep it controlled. Uh-huh. <clears throat> it is. And when someone is angry or someone is out of vengeance and they can't really see past their hand, they just see the goal is to, you know, do whatever they need to do to make things right. <clears throat> and sometimes that's what we're dealing with with people and In that sense, it can be a little bit scary. It can be, you know, (laughs) quite dangerous. Um, But change is is happening. It's coming. It's occurring. And we're one day closer to that monumental change. Absolutely. So you have a workforce deficit in Russia. Over here, almost 5 million people uh, that they can't fill positions. Now, you know, of course, you might say right off the bat, well, the war in Ukraine, yes, it's more than that, too, because a lot of countries were getting older, uh, especially countries uh, in the more uh, modernized world, uh, which is now that's all changing, too, because there are many cities in, uh, well, in in the um, very, very oil rich nations in the Middle East and then also in Southeast Asia. Uh, that make most of the U.S. look like a slum now, you know, with the technology. It, it's just it's just leaped ahead. And there's a reason why all the infrastructure it has been uh, let left to rot in the U.S. It's because, you know, the U.S. is to have a totally different position in the world after uh, this war is over. It's not going to be the same uh, military police force that it was of, of the control system, really. That, that job is heading over into the BRICS nations. And yet um, what we're going to see in the U.S. Is, is something very, very different. But again, this is not all set in stone. When you look to Japan, too, I mean, you know, the population is decreasing so fast. Nobody's having kids. Then when you looked and, and realized sperm counts have declined ex- to, to, to a degree that you cannot explain naturally. And fertility rates and now miscarriages. And now just the fact that, uh, you know, there's so many leaving this world so quickly all those uh, things that were brought into question when those guide stones blew up and and not just that because there's others uh, besides the guide stones that have been talking about this there's the club of rome and there's so many that have come out um a council of 300 you know again 40 years ago 50 years ago talking about the fact that there's just you know you can't handle 8 billion people on the planet one billion is the max. Five hundred million is is probably all that's needed. This is a reflection of that. So you know, again, what does war do? Well, it it, it 
thins out the herd, that's for sure. The other aspect that we're looking at is 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 that civil war in the U.S. they're trying so hard to bring about, what an independent Texas would look like. Yes, we've talked about that before. I remember doing videos on what if Texas were to secede, what if the nation was to break up, and this is going back to like 2018, 2019. At that point in time, people said it'll never happen, never happen. Now, you can see how it's going to happen, and, and this is the year that that all starts to really happen. We're going to watch it happen. So, you know, right now, you know, there are calls and there have been calls uh, for Texas to secede. And the reality is, what are you seeing right now? Well, you're, you're seeing moves to take 45 off the ballot and moves to take 46 off the ballot. And while, why, you know, in the deeper scheme of things, they don't make any real decisions themselves. And that should be really apparent by now to most people. And, and if it's not, um, maybe more coffee would be called for. It does matter emotionally to people. And so those, and that's unfortunately still the, the vast majority that think presidents actually have power. You know, they will bring about uh, uh, this civil conflict. And, you know, Texas, when you look at it, if it was by itself, it would it would be a powerful nation in and of itself. It's got a very diverse economy, and uh, is probably situated better than almost any other state to uh, take care of itself and thrive on its own. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see, as you know, Cindy had had a vision of the states being broken up into five pieces. Uh, gosh, about 2020 was it? I think it was about 2020. That, that we had seen that, and, and we'll have to see uh, what happens. And uh, I forget who it was. Was it Tyler that said, have you ever considered that maybe uh, the DEA, GEL numbers, when they show 99 million people living in the United States in 2025, could reflect that the United States may only be 19 states? I mean, it, it could be something like that because the other states have broken off. Absolutely. That could be part of, of what happens. You know, it, 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 and nothing is set in stone. This is, this is part of what we want to get across. Um, we will be doing another video today uh, or tomorrow, uh, again, showing how if you really want to study uh, some amazing uh, scriptures, per se, Go look into uh, like the Bhagavata Purana because it talks of things like time travel. It talks of the fact that we're in a multiverse. These books are thousands of years old and they have real wisdom in them. And they, they share uh, amazing things. And the reason why they have them in them is because they were given to us by beings that were much more advanced than us in a golden age, in a time where we were actually being visited by benevolent beings and taught and guided before the dark control system came in that views uh, humanity as nothing but slaves. As we see, the Schumann uh, was peaking yesterday, relatively calm right now, as far as the sun goes, relatively calm uh, as well. That active uh, zone on the sun, though, uh, did kick up uh, an M-class flare. Meanwhile, uh, don't forget that the Carol of the Bells came from Ukraine. This is so, so pretty. Absolutely a gorgeous piece. Now that's beautiful music, and and that hits you to the core. And it's it came from Ukraine, and you know again Ukraine uh, didn't exist. If we go back to the year I was born, you know Ukraine as a nation didn't exist. And the reality is, you know, all these nations are illusions. We have to start looking at things in a bigger picture. They have us terrified to think of being united because we don't want to be united under their one world order. 
No, uh, you know, what needs to go besides corporations is the UN needs to go, the WHO, the CDC. Every, every single one of these alphabet soups needs to be totally dissolved, every one of them. And we need to find a way to get along and to revel in the beauty of, of these uh, am just amazing creations that can be put together by humanity when, you know, they're not focused on destruction. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. Uh, I'm looking at this photo, looking at that photo on the on the screen. Look at that architecture in the background there. I mean, that is just incredible. But you're not going to tell me that regular humans did that. Where did that come from? I, I, I don't remember ever seeing any any photos that show it being built in real time. It's almost like it just has simply existed for a while, huh? Yes, absolutely. So <clears throat> whether you're talking Tartaria, Atlantis, Lemuria, you know, these different um, civilizations ebb and flow, they come and go. And the reality is we are in a Groundhog's Day loop in some ways. And so we're facing a critical time. And all the benevolent beings that we can't see, or maybe we get glimpses of them here and there, they are cheering us on. They want us to wake up. They want us to rise above. And, and they're, I'm sure they're saying things like, okay, are they going to rise above this time? Are they going to fall back into it? Are they going to go back into that destructive behavior? You know, this is what we've been taught. This is what we've been taught by the handlers. They, they've taught us their ways. And we have to recognize that, you know, we don't want to be like them. Look to the celebrities, you know, that are always uh, getting worked on and et cetera. And then as time catches up, they start to look inhuman. And, and then there is the inhuman uh, reality behind all this. We don't want to keep mimicking their ways. We want something better. We don't want to be trained to be uh, fighting and, and, and destroying ourselves. We can create instead of destroying. It's just that simple. And we could stop blaming others or we can stop justifying things by uh, saying, well, you know, they're just savages or they were witches or whatever. You know, uh, they're going to burn in hellfire forever anyway. Uh, no, they're not. And, you know, it, if you understood, if people understood how it is when we're out of the body, you know, the sensation of, of burning and fire doesn't exist because we're not in the body anymore. So right there, that whole notion of, of eternal, you know, torment and burning in the eternal fire of, of hell is, is something that anybody with uh, any experience astral projecting would know, yeah, that's a bunch of bunk. Because it's it is it, it's just fear based ideology that's used to control people. You are an eternal soul. You you don't need salvation from anybody. They want you to believe in their and uh, their, their lies and distortions so that you'll follow them and you'll walk right off that cliff trusting the science. Mm -hmm. and there is definitely an uptick in the separation of energies and that, that's something that can be very concerning. It can actually fall into the very dangerous category when belief systems go head to head, uh, that can get ugly. And I, I think recognition, shining a light on it is the first step to dismantling that because the controllers, they get a kick out of this. I mean, if they can see people copying them, they snicker and laugh. They're having a great time. They're doing their job well. So let's just not give them that. Let's give them what something that they're not expecting, something where two beings from completely opposite ends of species are getting along, are bringing love and bringing tolerance and bringing joy and peace. That's what they don't want. So let's do it. Absolutely. Um so I want to leave this with the thought that maybe we could put a, a prayer out there, an intention out there, if you're more comfortable with intention, <clears throat> prayer, <clears throat> if you're more comfortable with the term prayer or meditation, that this dark control system be removed from the planet, that true light spread. Because again, you could celebrate Christmas even if you don't believe in the concept of a Christ. 
there's no reason not to. We could just take the good. You know, uh, take the good in anything and discard the, what doesn't serve you. Let's overturn the system through peace and let's overturn the system through understanding and compassion and love and <clears throat> recognize that that person that uh, the media might be calling a terrorist is just somebody that has been terrorized themselves. We're going to do a little tune. Hold, hold happy thoughts. Source bless and namaste. Namaste and happy holidays. <laughs>